Okay, so we're live and direct today at uh, about seven minutes past twelve, live and direct from Buenos Aires, Argentina. We have our friends Juan Perez Echogoyen and Jordan Santarcieri from Onapsis. How many points do I get for getting your names right? Is that is that a good translation? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So the uh, the presentation today is um, Unbreakable Oracle ERPs, Attack on Siebel and J.D. Edwards. So thank you, gentlemen, very much for uh, coming on Hacker Hotshots. OK, thanks, Max. Thanks for the nice presentation. Yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge to to pronunciate our names because it's uh, this, these are Spanish and Italian names, so it's, it's going to be difficult. But thanks anyway. Um, OK, so let's start uh, with the presentation. I'm uh, JP. That's the easiest way to say that. I'm here with Jordan. So let's, uh, let's start with the, with the presentation, because we have several uh, demos and, um, and several slides to cover. So first of all, let's start with the intro, a quick intro on the company and ourselves. Basically. We are a part of Onapsis. Onapsis is a company focused on the security of ERP systems. We are heavily focused on SAP, but also moving to Oracle ERPs and other platforms as well. Uh, we develop software, perform consultancy services, trainings, uh, and we are very technical. Our background is really technical. We are coming from pen testing and research and, and very uh, low level. Uh, so I'm JP CTO. Jordan is head of SAP pen testing, uh, and that's quick intro. So what, why are we talking about ERP systems? Because ERP systems are the systems that are holding the most critical and valuable information uh, of every company, right? So we are not talking about just another application, a, a database, a web server, uh, a ser just a server. It's a set of systems connected to each other, exchanging and processing the, uh, all the, the most critical information, like payments, uh, HR information, um, stocks, uh, like all, all the, these business processes are being driven by, by the ERP systems. And we're not talking about exploiting a vulnerability or just a common execution. We're talking about espionage, sabotage, and fraud attacks that, that could really be performed if someone, if an attacker manages to break into these systems. So I'm going to forward to Jordan, who is going to show you some attacks on Civil. OK, let's talk a little bit of the attacks on Civil. The first thing that we're going to say is what we call the Civil Anonymous user. Uh, you must have that user, and this one will be the anonymous user. And that anonymous user will be used for licensing check, uh, presenting the login screen, etc. It is important to say here that you cannot delete the anonymous user. You must have at least one. And at the installation time, Civil is going to ask you who you want to put as the anonymous user. And we're going to see some a few things that are very interesting with this. We're going to see a, a brief video just because of time constraints, as you can see on my screen. So this is the login screen of Civil, right? The first thing that an attacker is going to do is going to try to test if this is his lucky day and going to put a random username and password. As you can see, it fails. But he might suspect that the anonymous user is publicly configured. So by accessing an URL that it should be restricted by username and password, he will get the strange meshes, saying that there are a level of privileges of the uh, user that he's using is not enough to display the regular menu. But as you can see, he will see the navigation bar. Um, he will be able to use the sitemap. The sitemap is, is the ca catalog of all the functionality that is bring by the civil system. And as you can see, Without providing any username and password, he was able to total bypass the civil login and get to administer all the users. So let's see why he was able to do that. Well, basically, the problem is that if you configure the anonymous user with a high level of privileges, 
there are some uh, errors or things that, as you can see on the demo, that could go wrong. Um, by example, it will be the total bypass of the login screen. So let me say that this is really important, and you will see as part of the countermeasures that the anonymous user in Siebel must always be set to a user with low level of privileges. Otherwise, anyone will be able to bypass them. So we continue talking about Siebel. Now we're going to talk about the Siebel query language. Well, Siebel query language is uh, an expression language that, ma that was originally created by Siebel. It's proprietary. Um, the thing with the Siebel query language is that you don't require any specific level of authorizations in order to use it. If you see the button, you can use it, basically. And it was originally created to filter data in an applet. We're going to see a brief demo on my screen again. Suppose that an attacker is on a public portal where he can get all the data. He saw the query button. Um, another thing is that he knows that there are some default users. For example, Sammy. He can go to the recovery screen, and by abusing of the civil credit language, he will be able to brute force all the information that he needs to reset the signing password. So the first thing that he needs to know is the username. He already knows that. It is Sunny. Then, after getting the user, he needs to get the email. He can do a civil query language to obtain that. And we can see that the email is Sunny at civil.com. And he can also know the secret question and the secret answer. So he just needs to enter the email, click on recover. The system will ask for the secret question and the secret answer. He will be able to answer that question and reset the signing password. Once he does that, after that, now an attacker is able to log in directly with the signing user and the password that he has just set. As you can see, this is another way of compromise a civil system. So, what just happened here? Well, basically, sorry, basically, by using the civil query language, you, you are able to bypass some authorization mechanisms that the attacker will be able to retrieve any information that is stored at the civil database. The exploitation of the civil query language, it will be very similar to exploiting a blind SQL injection. He will have to brute force all the content, all the data that he wants to retrieve. So, how we can fix this? Well, basically, there are some methods at the upper level that they are called the pre-query and the involved query methods. You will have to perform some filter code there in order to avoid the civil query language exception or just remove the query button. OK, thanks, Jordan. So basically, Jordan showed you some attacks on, on civil systems. We have a limited time, so we just picked a few of them. So now I'm going to show you a couple of attacks on JD Edwards as well which uh, we find in, in real life uh, pen testings and, and by where also some of these were discovered by Onapsis as well. So basically the first one is very simple. JD Edwards is installed with uh, a lot of standard users with standard passwords, with default passwords. So just having a default implementation without uh, securing the users, anyone would be able to fully compromise the system just attempting to log on to a system using these uh, standard accounts. Uh, depending on the environment, you will be able to log into one or other environment, but all these users are there, so you will be able to get in there, connect to a table, retrieve any information available for that user. So the countermeasure would be to limit uh, the availability of these users, so if you can uh, delete the, the users that you are not using, it will be good. Otherwise, you should secure the users using 
strong passwords uh, and avoiding using weak passwords as well. So then the second attack would be to related to uh, an interface on JD Edwards, which is the command controls uh, JDNet interface. Basically, there is a, a UDP port listening on the port 6015, which is used, which is non-authenticated and is used to receive commands, control commands to the JD Edwards system. So you can show connections, you can retrieve logs, you can get technical information as for the load, and send messages to other systems and retrieve traces, shut down the system. So yeah, shut down the system, right? So that's what an attacker would try to do in a sabotage attack. He will try to uh, perform a, a shutdown of the system, leaving aside all the leaving out of the system all the users, valid users, and all valid information, processes, interfaces, everything. So let's see a demo of this. If we go to the video, we will see the code that is used to exploit this vulnerability. That code is very simple. It's a couple of lines because it's Java, but this is basically creating a datagram, uh, a UDP packet with the string shutdown. Just sending shutdown to that port would do it. So now we'll, we'll ping the system to see if it's available. Uh, you will see that the system is alive. It's answering pings. You will see also that trying to reach the TCP port 6015. That's the one used by the end users. It's open, it's available. So we just execute the Java code, sending a JAT down through UDP to the 6015 port. We try to ping the system again. We will see that it's alive because it's, it has nothing to do with the operating system, but then if we just scan the 6015 port, it's closed, right? Because the system was completely shut down at the JD Edwards level, right? So that's that's quite critical and and actually if we go back to the presentation, well, you, see, you can see there all the description of the attack, but then the countermeasure is basically to patch the system because this is another uh, vulnerability that was uh, fixed by Oracle uh, for the JD Edwards systems. So there are, uh, going back to the 6015 port, the TCP one, that's JD Edwards Net, GD Net, exposing a lot of different functions and methods um, to the network. Some of them are authenticated, some others are not. And you can do a lot of things connecting to that port, depending on the function that you're executing, you can retrieve a lot of different type of information, like you can retrieve the configuration itself, um, also, holding the database password as well, so that's another critical um, attack. But then if we go to the demo, we will see that there is a, a convenient um, function that is called ASIC retrieve password, and yes, it's true, it's to retrieve passwords for users. So you only need to know a hard-coded key that you can see as first parameter, and then just a point to the user that you want to receive the password, right? So knowing just the key and the password, the, the key, I'm sorry, and the user name, not the password of the user, you will receive the password of that user, and then you will be able to log into the system. So this is the, the demo is similar to the previous one. Just see that the port is open, execute the Java code to retrieve the password, of the user GDE. We have to provide the environment as well. That's another parameter. Uh, but you can see that the password was retrieved. So this uh, leads to also another fact that is that passwords are not hashed but encrypted in the JD Edwards systems, right? And also we are retrieving other users like AppSec because it, this was a talk presented in, in AppSec, in, in AppSec uh, conference. Then that's my user also. I have a really easy password. It's the same as my username. So you can retrieve any user uh, password. So just connecting to the to the proper port, right? Uh, so this is what just uh, I just explained. So and, and some some further attacks that you can do connecting back to a system, 
retrieving the the user password table, which is the F90 OWSEC. This is another vulnerability that was also fixed. So apply the latest uh, Oracle critical patch updates because that's uh, the way that you will solve these vulnerabilities. So we believe this is the tip of the iceberg. This this was uh, part of a research project that took us uh, some months to analyze CD Edwards and also Sibo. Um, and Oracle spent more than two years in order to fix all the vulnerabilities that we we sent them. Um, it's it's uh, I really encourage you to uh, go to Onapsis webpage. You will see all the advisories and the information there. So if you want to go deeper into all the vulnerabilities, you can go there. Um, um, okay, so I think we are pretty much on time. Uh, it's we are on time for questions. Max, is that yeah, right? Absolutely. Let me get you back on that, guys. That was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. That was a terrific presentation. Um, Thank you. Quan, let me get you back on as well. Yeah. If you just press the screen share. Perfect. Okay, so, um, guys, terrific. Thank you very, very much. I love the, uh, you know, the demo presentations are always the best. So, let me, uh, a couple of questions. I'm going to ask, ask you them as they came in, okay? Um, sure, okay. In what way do these vendors publish their vulnerabilities? Is, uh, is it similar to Microsoft, a clear public and predictable way? I'm not sure if I got your question. Um, it says, in, I'll, I'll say it again, in what way do these vendors publish their vulnerabilities? Yes. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not exactly as Microsoft is scheduled because there is a critical patch update uh, for Oracle. It's, I, I think it's quarterly, so, um, but Microsoft is doing this uh, monthly. So it's not as often as Microsoft, but it, it's still something that is scheduled. It's uh, quarterly. Okay. Um, who is normally responsible for securing these systems? Ah, oh, that's a great question. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, because sometimes uh, security, many times actually, security of these applications is uh, regarded as, as a synonym of segregation of duties. And that falls under a specific area, which is uh, taking care of roles and profiles and new users. Um, but this, this is, it depends on the company, right? Um, this is something that is um, completely uh, not taken uh, in, in account in, in, in many companies. It's something that is not being taken care of. Um, and these vulnerabilities are out there in, in many implementations. The responsible should be uh, the IT security, in as for taking care of the security of the of the application servers and the technical uh, level. But many times, this as these uh, systems are the owner of these systems are financials and other areas. It's sometimes it's uh, like not being taken care of at all, just roles and profiles. Yeah. Okay, and then the final question is here: is how does JDE hash pa passwords? How JDE? How does JDE hash passwords? Well, that's uh, actually there is no hashing mechanism there. It's encrypted. That's why you can retrieve the passwords remotely because there is an encryption key used to encrypt the passwords. But you know that. You, if, if the system can decrypt them, then anyone would be able to decrypt them as well and, and access the passwords in clear text and potentially expand, extend the compromise to other systems. Terrific. Gen gentlemen, I want to uh, thank you again for spending the time and sharing this excellent uh, research and, and, and these demos with us. It's fascinating. And I want to wish you continued success uh, and hopefully we'll thank get you back on Hack a hot shots again soon and keep up the definitely. good work, okay? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.